Hey guys, what? Oh, sorry. Hey guys, what is going on? Can you hear me? Can you see me? I think I just kicked it over into weird mode. All right, there we are. We're back. How's everybody doing? Welcome. Uh, I hope that you're having a wonderful evening. Let me just, I'm trying to get rid of these settings. Go away. There we go. All right. All right. We got people in here already. Uh, Pete, how's it going? Scott, how's it going? From Scottish Aquatics. Faint. Uh, Christy. Yay. Pug Pugmus Maximus. What is up? All right, guys. So why don't I just show you right away? You might have caught a glimpse of it. But here is the shining glory for now. Uh, here is the new 90P. Um, to give you a sense of size compared to the old tank. I mean, there's a five-gallon bucket. There's a TV, speakers, you know, books. Ta-da. And there's the tank. Here's the cabinet. So under here, just set this up. So we've got uh, under here, um, we've got a CO2 tank with a regulator that was 50 bucks. Uh, and then we've got, um, well, you know what? First of all, let me just tell you real quick. So, hello everybody. Tonight, I do want to tell you some really cool news. It's with uh, Aquatic Arts. It's some big news about everybody who is on my channel, who's subscribed to my channel, and, and also those of you who use aquatic arts uh they have a sale for black friday that they're going to extend to you guys a better deal than to everyone else because of the loyalty and because uh you know the money every time we spend money you uh anybody on my channel every time we spend money uh they save eight percent of that money which is what a lot of people would spend towards um a fee like an affiliate fee we save that money, we decided, and we put it into an account, basically, and then we give that money back to you guys in gifts and in discounts and things like that. So I'll give you some details on that in a little bit, but uh, while we wait, to, wait for people to filter in, um, I'll answer any questions and random mishmash stuff, and I'm going to give you guys a rundown of how I set this tank up uh, and just kind of show you around, show you how it's growing in and everything. So I hope that sounds good. And uh, in the links in the description below, uh, there should be information on how and where to buy any of the hardware that I have here as far as like the CO2 stuff and the soil and all that. I think, I think it's still linked in the description. So let's get back to checking out what we set up here. And uh, so we've got uh, a, just a 2.5 pound can. Uh, it's, it's a little bigger than a paintball can, but this regulator and uh, this regulator I really like. It's got cloudy water in it right now because I didn't get all the soap out of it, unfortunately. But I really like this one. I've had it for two and a half years now. Uh, it's never uh, let me down, steered me wrong, and you can control it really easily, the flow right on here. And then, of course, it's uh, got a solenoid, so you can plug it into the timer. Back here, we have an Odyssey, spelled like the ocean, like a C-S-E-A. Uh, and we have an Odyssey uh, 5. Hundred, so that whoops, sorry guys. So that is basically an exact copy of a Fluval uh, FX5, and so that's what I'm running. It's total overkill for this tank. It's good for like 125 gallons, and this is only like 46. So up here on the tank, this stuff isn't uh, set in stone, but we've also got a little heater. Um, it's just a 200 watt. Uh, Aquion Pro, which have been rated the highest. Uh, so a guy in our um, in our fish club actually spent years tracking uh, the 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 functionality of a heater. And there's no heaters that just turn on proportionally, really. So they're either on or off, and they have a thermostat that tells them 
when to be on or off. But these ones have like a ceramic and uh, sand, like little silicone sand and glass in there and ceramic. And uh, basically uh, they have heat that gets trapped around that ceramic core. And so it's not as harsh of a, a, a heat bring up, like heat come up and come off. So instead of just always being 120 degrees, uh, the Aquium Pro line is a good one. Um, they actually break the least uh, out of any of the, uh, I think he tested 35. There's a website. If you look for it, uh, I might be able to post a link in the comments later. But if you look for it, a guy in our club spent years with like his 30 or 40 tanks. He put different uh, different. Uh, heaters in them and put probes like different thermometer probes that went back to a computer and gave him a graph of the temperature every second uh for all that time and when the thing would break and if it's better to have two than one and actually uh if you have two small ones that might be okay but usually one is just best and just you know keep track of your water temperature somewhat uh if the the main way that they break uh, is really cheap ones can sometimes break where they're stuck on, but as long as you're not like dropping it and bashing it, that shouldn't happen too much. All right, so then for the outflow, this this piping and everything, this is all aftermarket. So because I got the I got the filter and this stand, as well as the Twin Star. This is a 36 inch AE Twin Star. Uh, I got these both used. You can see the colors are like very pastel with Twinstar. Um, and so it gives a really nice full spectrum. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a warm light usually, they say, but it's actually, to me, it comes off as cool. Maybe it's just all the gray stone and things in here. The color's off a little bit on the live stream uh, just because it's a live stream. Goose Not Maverick, JK Aquatics, uh, Skywalker Nerd Boy, Aquaballs. Hey, what is up? Uh, J Rad, what's going on? How are you doing? Uh, Aquaballs, I hope you stay for a while. I'm doing water changes. Yes, he gave me 25 gift card and got Moss. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, let's see, what are we gonna do here? So, uh, Jennifer, hello. So in here right now, uh, the, this tank has two bags of Amazon, Amazonia 2, which is an ADA aqua soil. I think I linked that in the info also. And Fluval Stratum. I mixed the two so that there would be different size little pebbles of, of substrate. And that allows them to just kind of interlock better from what I've seen and allows when you're trying to get a carpet to start, it allows that to start. Now, I also did the dumbest thing ever, and I put Corydoras, Panda Corydoras at that, which are like the most inquisitive, hyper uh, breeding little, I don't know. They run around in their little gang of five usually. Uh, right now, I don't know why there's only four. Oh, I guess they're all four all five are hanging out um but they love pulling all this stuff out and so what you can see here is that i basically did it so that um from here there's an there's kind of a falling trajectory from the stones and then there's banding of jade in the stone you might not be able to see the blue color of the stone really clear right now it's blue and green but this is a local jade that we have, and it's not overwhelming. It's not to it's not like a clear, like crystally jade. It's more of like a quartz. Uh, so this is kind of a three-row uh, column here and here, and they're kind of like fins that would come out of a mountain range that have been eroded over a long time. And then I wanted a lot of tension here. So instead of doing the full arch and everything for now, I've just got this tension going this way, and then we've got a big tall rock that's like 40 or 50 pounds back there, and some more kind of fins from that. So right now, I know the plants are distracting, but hopefully when the plants grow in, when the carpet grows in, and then what I'm going to do is I actually put a bag of pool sand in, uh, so a 25-pound bag, that is, 
if you if I put more sand right around here and then I'm gonna take sand and make a path back there, I might kind of do some little sand trails around here, touch this up. But it's just it's it's a silly idea to put sand in and and try to think that it's gonna stay that way for too long. But I just wanted to do it for fun. The other kind of interesting thing about this aquascape, if you saw in my tissue culture videos, uh, I'm definitely trying uh, some baby tears and some hair grass and some Monte Carlo. Uh, we'll see if they start if they start um, you know carpeting at all. Uh, hopefully they will. Hopefully the light's strong enough and everything, and the 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 Corydoras are not strong enough. The other thing you can see is, can you see how bright pink and red that is? That's the Kabamba furcata. That's a new shoot that's grown just in this tank. And it just shows you how, how much of a difference, if you can see the new shoots, how much of a difference having CO2 and a stronger light. This isn't like a high, high light, but it's a, it, I'd call it medium to high. Uh, same things going on with the Ro Rotala Ludwigia um, Super Red back there. There's just a color, a couple of red uh, plants in this tank. But then my main background plant, which I want to grow in thick, and it will grow to the top, is Limnophilia bellum. And this is going to take a long time because you have to cut each stem and it doesn't branch off into more stems. Uh, you have to cut each stem, and it doesn't fork like most st like stem plants. So I've got uh, 20 starts running all the way from back there to over there. And we'll, I don't know, there's probably going to be sand in this corner in the end. But what I'm going to do is downstairs, that same tank is still growing out, plus this one. So we'll trim this one again. The tank downstairs, that should be 40 more row or more strands of it back there and hopefully that'll give it like a light wispy feel the other thing the other reason i've planted the heck out of this tank uh or i've started to i, I could go so much more overboard um but there's all these crips in here i got crip pink flamingo nuri um hudori uh all i just have a bunch of crips in here uh, and I want those because they stay fairly low. Um, if they do end up getting too big, like some of these, some of these will get big. The Crip Undulatus can get, can get big. But other than that, I've got Boos and Anubius with like purple, red, uh, colorations to kind of contrast that blue, uh, of the stone. The moss was already on these, uh, rocks and so forth uh that i put in but it's gathering some sort of new little um mold or something so i might uh or algae i should i suppose so i might uh trim that all up all right let's read someone says read my chat is the stand you bought yes uh alan this is not the particle board stand i'm glad you brought that up i forgot who i, I mentioned that to i mentioned it to some people during at some point uh, I took the particle board stand back. I was afraid I had a nightmare that water would get to it and like just turn it into like a soggy waffle cookie of stuff. Um, and uh, I think that I think that you know in the end this will be better, but uh, eh, let's hope. Um, but yeah, I think the carpeting will definitely, like you, you're saying, Mark, um, I think that will pull the space together. Right now, it just looks messy, right? And it there's elevation changes that you guys probably can't see, so it slips up towards the back pretty drastically. Um, and right now, the stone doesn't stand out, but I'm hoping when everything is so green, the stone will be the exception. And I'll probably be putting like a cling on the back that's, you know, blue or, or green. I don't know what color. I kind of like the frosted ADA ones um, for the back. Uh, I might just stick with black. Black's what I've always done. But I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it lighter. Maybe I'll use a white one or get one of those fancy ones like Aqua Pros uh, <laughs> has on, on some of his tanks. He's got those LED ones that are backlit. But I'm also hoping to get a lily pipe for this. This is just what came with that cheapo filter. 
And the filter was already full of uh, life when I got it. So, it, yay, it's cycling the tank. The tank's ammonia hasn't, it went up to 0.25 for like four days. And that's from the new substrates because they're so packed of, with plant nutrients. But then they it just dipped right after the first water change and hasn't come back up. So I threw fish in, and I'm watching it closely and watching the fish closely, and they don't seem to care whatsoever. They seem happy and healthy. Um, so I'm just going to let them chill for like a week or, or so more before I add any more fish. That and I really shouldn't add any more fish uh that are going to disturb the plants if they're that kind of fish. Um, my angel fish, I love him, Sergey. Uh, he's been hitting his nose recently on the tank because he, I don't know, he can't see the edge of it. See his nose is hit. hit. Um, so he's been hitting his nose, but he's also getting more blue and he's extended his fins more. Like right now he's in a scared position. Because I'm filming him and right nearby, and I think he's scared of the new CO2 uh, being set up today. But he's uh, he's a good boy. He's full grown, and I'm just so torn. If I can't find another fish with such beautiful blue, this was he was from Aquatic Arts, and he was only like six ninety nine, and he came pretty good size, or no, maybe he was eight ninety five. Um, but I had four of them, and the other male he killed and then i put him in with both females and one of those females died what i thought was from an infection um, from a cut when i found it on her that i hadn't seen she was hiding in the back and it was a matter of days uh but then uh, he mated with the other female they had two clutches of eggs he ate all the babies this is the first time Second time I took the babies, put them upstairs, and uh, unfortunately they didn't make it. Uh, I don't know if it was temperature or what the deal was. I, I'd gone out of town, so I just don't know what what which problem it was. Uh, but he ended up being my only blue German uh, angel left, and so I'm really hoping uh, that I could find him an adult mate especially with that fire, like that is a blood red eye. And when he is agitated, it gets super dark and the black on it gets dark and his cap gets all golden. But there's actually like a blue twinge over his, uh, underneath that gold. So when he's not showing off, it's actually like a silvery, uh, steel blue, which you can kind of see right there on his belly and all that. So, um, really love him as the fish but if i can't find a female that's his same strain i might not have him in this tank i might give him away to uh like dean or uh you know the master fish breeder uh from from aquarium co-op channel and so forth he's got lots of koi um koi angel fish he lives fairly close to me and i've gotten fish from him before and given him fish before so as much as I love, as much as I love uh, Sergio or Sergey, as my wife calls him, I don't know. He's Sergio. Uh, he's not going to be in here for sure. So, I mean, this was going to be an angel tank for sure, but now I'm, I just don't know. These guys are just in here as like barometer fish. They're just testing out the water for me. Um, will a pleco eat angel eggs? Uh, in theory, it, w it might eat them if they were on the bottom of the tank, but it's probably not, um, probably not going to go out of its way to eat them. I mean, if it's up on like a filter or something, I suppose it might, if it can see them, but usually angels really protect their eggs anyhow. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, also, oh, you should show the, throw the Taiwan lily you have. Uh, yeah, I do have some downstairs. I could do that. You know, I thought about Taiwan lily, tiger lily. Everything in here is really slow and low growing, except for anything that's in the back, say. I, I guess you guys can get a better sense of where things are. Um, this is a uh, Rotala mini red butterfly on both, oh, in clumps here and here. 
or actually this this side uh, there's one clump where did it go oh it's back under here of uh pink vietnam mini butterfly uh, or purple mini mini butterfly um and it's just been in the dark so long that it's totally green but i'm hoping it comes back um a beautiful uh, fiery little red and orange and yellow colors and everything back there will kind of be red yellow and orange and in the foreground will be the cooler tones and the carpet that's the idea and then sand so where you kind of see sand that will be more sand and then i might even add some more eco complete or stratum uh, i also planted back in here um other than the the crypts i put a couple different like uh Christmas tree moss and Java moss. Um, a little bit of, um, oh, I can never pronounce the name of it, but these guys, the Signanthium, I can't ever say it. Sorry, guys. Uh, I just failed. And then also the, uh, um, I, what I want is Hygrophilia pit. Pinnitifata to kind of go up into here and maybe in the far extreme corner, which would be sand, except for maybe like just a corner and there'd be more sand here. Um, I don't know. We're kind of going to let the carpet and everything grow in. So we're going to need patience for a month or two and to see where things are headed. If the carpet just doesn't take, like for instance, some of this stuff that is in the high flow area seems to just not want to not dig in it. Uh, but, like, my Nuri Crypt, uh, which is, like, Crocodile Nuri Crypt, I think it's called, it's doing super well, and it's just, it's beautiful. That's from, um, that is from, uh, who sent me that? Uh, oh, okay, so the Hidori Crypt is for, and uh, is all from uh, Lucas Brett. This stuff was from Han, from Han Aquatics, um, Han Tran, um, this Nuri, and it's an older plant uh, that was. I moved all the crypts pretty much up here, uh, and then there's new pink flamingo, and then there's this Sao Paulo. Um, I can never remember the name of the the Latin first name though of it, um, but in any case, uh, some po put some pogo stemmen in the front. Uh, which pogo stemmen? Um, I was thinking about pogo stemmen hell hell fairy or Hellfry up here, actually. I have it ordered from Aquatic Arts. Believe it or not, they're going to still send me more plants for this tank. Now, I got, I, um, I'm, I'm trying to think about how to make the rocks still stand out, so I don't want plants to grow tall, and so then that really comes to me having to keep up with trimming. So we're going to start with a bunch of plants. And if, if, if it's too much work, then I'll, you know, and I don't want to trim twice a week or whatever, then I will move those plants out and we'll stick with carpeting plants and vice versa. If the carpeting totally fails, maybe I will go get sandbags and raise up, you know, the whole level of these rocks, like up to so that they start here so that they start, you know, a foot up the tank. Um, I had so many different thoughts going through my head, but then I thought, like, I want it to be pretty, and I don't want to have to fight algae and do all these things, um, like, upkeep-wise with a tank that's here that my guests and people coming over always see. Um, I'm sure it will evolve. It'll probably turn into a jungle tank like all my other tanks. But right now, it just feels very disjointed because the plants are too tall. The, there's saffron bacopa that's also going to be red up here. Um, and there's some anubias back in here um, that's big. It's uh, f uh, well, I can't remember which one that is. Uh, I was going to put some coffeefolia back in there. I don't know. So basically, the idea with the sand is I gave the substrate uh, sand so that when I set these rocks in, they don't hit the glass at the bottom and and chip it or crack it. And then I put the uh, substrate. So right here, you can see where it's just sand. I'm not sweating that yet because it's going to be more sand. Now, usually you don't want to do more than like two inches or an inch and a half of sand just because of bacteria. 
and you can get sulfur bubbles you can get all sorts of issues with just like blue and green bacteria also cyanobacteria being annoying but i also have had sand work out just fine and so we'll see i kind of want to play with sand i mean the the thing is that sand is definitely a resource and uh, a tool that we should use as aquarium uh, you know as fish keepers but it it just um it gets abused in like non-planted tanks and then it just gets really beat up you know if i get some malaysian trumpet snails and then i have even more quarries in here um they'll dig all through it and you know keep it pretty broken up uh so a lot of that has to do with like what you're stocking it with but also that being said there's no way this is going to happen i mean this is going to happen like you can see right here where the gravel is and where the quarries have taken up the sand uh, or, or not the gravel the fluval they've taken sand and they've dumped it up there and they've also kicked the bank down of of the stratum there so the way i made this i have a video of it but i basically made a kidney bean shape where the rocks are put about a half an inch sand in there then i made a rim of sand around the rest filled it up to about an inch and then i poured the eco complete and and uh amazonia too and like i said if you want those those are both lower ammonia um substrates than most of the ones on the market but they're still active so you still have to cycle them without fish and things like that in theory but in this case i had a filtered pump and it was working out well and um yeah you should have used cardboard to separate the two for a clean look um no so the other thing um once i'm done because i'm nowhere near done i want to see how naturally how the plant or how the plants grow um what i'll be using actually is it's similar to it's called riveteering plastic ties but it's got a consistency similar to like these vinyl blinds or whatever and so it's clear and you cut it down and it's like an inch and I can totally put it wherever I want. Um, some people use cardboard, some people use playing cards. I've used lava rock, I've used plastic. Um, uh, the green machine over in Britain, uh, what, what's his, uh, James Finley, he uses uh, CD cases that he breaks in half, so, or CDs, like free AOL ones. Uh, so, whatever, you know. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it. I might add wood, I might not. Right now, it's really just still cycling. Um, in this tank, we had some excitement. The male looks like he's given up. I don't know why, but he has babies in here. And uh, looks like she has a nest underneath his freaking tube. That is hilarious. Um, she's all color, colorful, and they've been spawning. But she has a nest underneath his his little cave nest that she's dug out. Good for her. Um, but yeah, there's still so much. Like I put at first, I put this Barclay Longifolia in there um, in the tank over there, and it it had this beautiful red color. But it was so overpowering without the background grown out or, or anything that it just didn't feel right. Um, and so yeah and now this corner is feeling empty to me um like i need some rocks or something and this is too cluttered so it's kind of ridiculous to just have some cribs and some plecos and that basically endlers but the endlers finally since the angelfish isn't in here have had lots of babies um and then all this uh anubius and boost uh that's growing in here this is all from aquatic arts um and let's get to the announcement, uh, Alex, because you led with that, you jerk. So what's up with the announcement? Well, I talked to uh, the guys over at Aquatic Arts, and I will have the password for you guys um, soon, hopefully. I think they're going to run it earlier than, on, uh, than just on Friday for Black Friday, you know, for the deals that everyone has. But we talked it over, 
and they were going to do a 15% uh, off all hardscape and 20% off all livestock for people in general, I think, something along those lines. And I said, well, what if my viewers, do we want to do a giveaway or do we want to give everyone a chance to get something who would buy something? And so they, they said, you know what, let's, let's combine both of our ideas. So basically, anybody who participates in the Black Friday giveaway that uh, uses the code secret history, all caps, uh, 15 or 10, if you've used those codes lately, that money gets... Uh, set aside. I set that aside, and we can. I can send out you guys out gifts and things like I have in July and like I did in January and before that August and before that uh, December. So every six months from them, we're giving out more. It started at five hundred dollars this December. I don't know. Don't know for sure. But in July, we had twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars worth of giveaways that we did plus. 12 free shipping uh, passes to aquatic arts. So I, I don't want to promise um, what those giveaways will be, but any money spent on those giveaways and during the Black Friday, any of the profit, which actually there's almost no profit, <laughs> to be honest, uh, will be given into that or set into that fund and it will come back. It has been ac accumulating since uh, July, since the last big giveaway. And so Aquatic Arts will be giving uh, back to, to the channel um, for you guys being so loyal. And, you know, they're good. They're a freaking awesome website. And, yeah, I, I understand some people have a problem with their shipping. I mean, it is, it is, it is high. It is expensive. But check this out yes yeah, scotty i can get you a wrench i i was gonna get more um i was gonna get more uh mods in here anyhow it's just hard for me sometimes to to catch up reading and to insert links and so forth uh what happened to the piece of wood in the tank it's sitting right there next to the tank but what i wanted to show you really quick is that so aquatic arts i've been friends with them and buying from them since they just had shrimp the thing that most people aren't realizing about them too is their freshwater shrimp uh one they have gone traveled all over the world to get shrimp that do not have elobiopsidae which most people just are like we guarantee our shrimp um and that's crap um to me anyways but like my green babalties they originally came from here um you know, and the, there's a price, obviously, of, uh, you know, 10 bucks or whatever, or uh, maybe it's 12 bucks, but that, that's for like three or four or two or whatnot. My, for my algae eating short nose shrimp, uh, that's a nice picture of one that's probably just been eating yellow algae. Uh, but these, uh, I love these guys from Aquatic Arts. The, they're sending me out these because they're, as big as a mono shrimp, but they're much more gentle. And I'm hoping that they can cohabitate with, uh, you know, cribs and other type uh, of critters like that. So they have all these shrimp, which is great. Like, I love that they're bringing in these rare um, or just more unusual. Like, bamboo shrimp's not rare, uh, but unusual. And I know a lot of people are also complaining, hey, they're always sold out of this or that. Well, they have left some of these things up. And so if you are, are like, oh, I really, really want that, um, please email them. Email them and say, like, hey, uh, are you going to get any more of the ninja shrimp? Like, that's one that I saw for sale and, and this or the Silhouette. Uh, and I was like, yes, I need I need 10 right now. Like, these guys uh, turn from black to this color in the matter of half a second and then they jump like crazy so i mean there's all sorts of funky um inverts that they have here the pinocchio shrimp and sometimes they're not actually sold out if their inventory's back in but just off the top of my head like i i love flip aquatics too um for for some of their stuff but this these guys these zebra babaltis 
are going for eighteen ninety five. I think on his site when he has them, they're thirteen ninety five there. Um, freshwater crayfish. Um, I mean, look at all these colors and species that they have. Uh, there's just there's just such crazy beautiful crayfish out there. I mean, look at that. Um, that doesn't even look like like how did nature think that one up? Um, but so the, the agreement for Black Friday, you guys. I guess you know what I'll I'll spill the beans. I'm gonna let you guys know. Oh, that's such a beautiful crayfish too. Crayfish are not very nice, but um, they're sure pretty. But they've got a nice plant selection, so they're going to be helping me with the tank. They have their featured products, like some of their uh, fish that are on sale. Like $49.39 for this Pleco. Wow, that's beautiful. It's going to be a big boy. but um, you know, Or Brownie uh, Purple Boost, only $8.95. And that's for those big plants like the ones that I have. Now they're carrying uh, specific betas. They're doing tissue cultures. They're doing uh, the nano fish that I love. They've had every kind of scar, you know, scarlet battas, uh, blue battas, uh, a lot of albino varieties, thread fins, these super long fin pandacories. You might have seen that on Swiskey's channel. So it says thirty one ninety five, and that's for three. Those are going for twenty nine ninety nine at my local pet store at one of them. So they have these killer deals, and they buy from local hobbyists in the Midwest when they can. Um, and, oh, they have more Koi Nemo bettas. And I think I'm going to be getting, um, other than more needlefish, I think I'm going to be getting these blue uh, panda uh, apistos for the tank, for the new tank. So I think instead of cribs, I'm going to try these out and see how it goes. I was thinking of doing like a cockatoides or something, but I feel like a lot of people have those. Um, and, you know, they're pretty. They're really cool. But they're, uh, I don't know, they're almost like a dragon. They're almost too much sometimes. Uh, and then this being one of my favorite, hands down, I've never seen one cheaper anywhere i got mine all the ones i have i got here and they're all beautiful they're better specimens than this one actually um they're all like turning banana yellow or school bus <laughs> orangey yellow and uh that's 54.95 for a leopard frog pleco which is like almost as rare as a zebra frog uh pleco to for breeding it's it's very hard Plus, they've got all, a bunch of guppies and, you know. So, in any case, enough about um, aquatic arts in, in particular here. But what I wanted to say is that, um, and, and all the because they have, they have like a crazy amount right now. Um, so, the other thing that, that we agreed upon is for Black Friday, we're not doing a giveaway through the channel. What we're doing is we're giving you guys all, get ready, 30% off their entire website, which with deaths and employees, and they pay, pay their employees right, they give money to charity, they give, um, I think it's 12% of their proceeds to uh, the, the tanks in, teachers and tanks uh, in the classroom, and uh, all sorts of other really cool projects. Um, they help out homeless people, they help out, um, the, for battered uh, women and children's shelter out there and for winter clothing and Sub-Zero. They're just a really cool website, really nice people. And so Aquatic Arts, I highly uh, recommend you check out their livestock. Every week it's changing. Now they have a, a clearance thing. And just use my code. If, if they have a better sale running, don't use my code. But say, hey, I got here from Alex. And that will help put money back into the giveaway that we're doing and so that allows me to give you guys more stuff twice a year when we do the big multi it's turning into a multi thousand dollar giveaway now it's a perspective issue i'm not drinking out of a one liter dr pepper bottle uh, so let me look at the comments because i i know i neglect y'all okay let's see here Comments. 
Alex, do they have purple ones? Purple shrimp? There's no such thing as purple shrimp, at least on stable line. Uh, I need to add Scott a wrench. Remind me, Scott, if I forget. I can't do it like right now. I have to do it later. Uh, does being a mod require being on a PC or can I do it from mobile? I think you can. Uh, hey, hey, Nola Jane. Fish Dreams, hello. Uh, what's a good source for ornamental shrimp diseases? What's a good source? Like, of getting them, uh, buying them from your cheapest source online. <laughs> no, um, uh, there isn't a really good one. There, there, there was, somebody wrote a journal entry on um, Neo Caradina, or not a journal entry, a scientific journal uh, on Neo Caradina uh, and on Elo Biopsidae, and they think they haven't figured out how to treat that. But there are about 50 diseases, and what happens is they raise all these shrimp, um, a lot of times places like Flip, that have beautiful shrimp. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's the best color you can get um, outside of some really expensive select breeders like, um, you know, Lucas Bretts. And, and at one point, we had to get all the shrimp from Asia, right? They're not from here. But when they import... 20,000 shrimp at a time there's a chance that there's a disease because those shrimp are living in huge tubs in areas and they're moving every few days into different tubs and um, getting moved around and grown out in in um, stagnant water out in you know developing nations <clears throat> where also there's other wild shrimp and livestock that uh, can pass it to them but we don't know a lot about him. Uh, I really love the dwarf CPOs. Um, turns out, so does my uh, Pleco, and he was big enough to eat them. So the three amigos I had got eaten. You live and learn, right? Um, so yeah, um, let's see here. I have a small tank, just a couple of fish. I have a small tank and the only need a couple fishes. The shipping is more than the double the cost of the critters. Yeah, really, if you're if you're shopping with aquatic arts, you should shop with them because you need something special, you know, or if you're going to get a bunch of stuff at once. Because really, you want a live ship. It's overnight live shipping, you know, guaranteed. The shipping runs 20 to 40 bucks, depending on where you are. But... Their prices, usually if you look at it, they don't believe in stacking their price into the price of the fish. So they believe that it should all be separate so you can see it. They used to ship uh, $15 shipping on everything, and they were having a lot of fish dying, a lot of people complaining, and just issues in transit. And so they went with a private carrier, courier service, uh, that keeps them in a climate controlled vehicle the entire time and uh, you know it, it's worked out way better especially if you're getting like three fifty dollar plecos you want those to come in alive you know I mean you want all your fish to come in alive but if you just need a couple tetras that's probably not where you want to shop but if you need uh, really good uh you know shrimp that are most their shrimp if they can like their blue dreams and things like that i think lucas brett still has bet the best blue dreams around um and me because i have his uh but if you need shrimp that are locally u.s bred they have a lot of those the crayfish and invert section and their snails are insane I mean, there's a lot of people I know, too, who even resell, like, their nearite snails and things because the price is so low. And I know two different local pet stores that order from them. Um, you just want to make it worthwhile, you know, spend 100 bucks, and then the shipping, even if it is you live down, up in, I don't know, or you live in San Diego and they're in Indianapolis, then shipping, even if it is $34.99 or something, uh, one, it's going to be overnight guaranteed but two uh you know you don't have the, the, there's way less chance the fish dies when it gets acclimated and everything and i think it still ends up being cheaper and i'm gonna give you guys you guys always with me have at least 10 percent off they have a 75 percent off clearance bin from whatever whatever they're low on in a tank they move it out they're trying to do that they're, they've grown as a company because of you guys because of 
their good service and their customer service is awesome. If you have a problem, you talk to them and it's like, boom. Yes, they do have pink crypt flamingo um, plants, I believe. They've got all sorts of uh, tissue cultures and plants. Uh, Aquatic Arts is just a really, really, really good company that I enjoy working with. Not just for the fact that, you know, they give back to the community. They buy from breeders like us. If I lived in Indianapolis or Chicago, they would buy my angelfish. That's where they get a lot of their fish, you know. Um, and so for me, that is another huge reason rather than like Arizona Gardens or something like that, uh, where it's a, basically a trans shipper. They're ordering from Asia and then they're reselling. Uh, and I don't. Uh, I like that they have very specialized fish. I mean, they do have normal fish too. And the idea there is like, okay, I just spent a hundred bucks on the shrimp that I'm starting a colony with. And to me, I've paid 80 bucks for a guppy or a hundred bucks for a guppy or a shrimp that have good genes, you know? Uh, and same with rainbow fish or uh, any live bear, you really want to have a good solid line. That's not to me. That is awesome. Uh, and for 20, yeah. And their plants are pretty awesome. They like to, if they see that you're from the channel, a lot of times they throw in extra stuff. So that's cool too. Um, this tank is like just all plants, uh, as you know, and it can easily, uh, like here is a beaut. look at this beautiful little guppy. Um, and then the Luminatus rainbow fish are still back there. Um, all these uh, green dragon plecos. These guys had babies the other day, too. She looks like she's pretty swollen right now, actually. I know she's got poop also. But um, I really want these long tails to spawn. I saw two of the babies and never found more. And I just found two more baddis hanging out in this tank. Um, and I have been chasing them around forever uh, because I've been moving the baddis all over. Let's see, are they up here right now? Yeah, so there's some baddis. I let them finish off the shrimp that got sick in this tank and then I moved the babaltis and other shrimp that were okay, but they're should be baddis where is he uh, i've got baddis in three different tanks and then these are the koi endlers um koi endlers over here and so you can see I've, I've also got lots of other plants that i can pull from um look at all my shrimp so these are half of these are <laughs> nebula shrimp and uh, golden nebula shrimp from Aquatic Arts. And the other half are um, my favorite plant. Ooh, I mean, I love Boost because of the selection in color. And you don't have to, you know, plant it. But it's not super versatile, so that makes it a little tough. Um, but I think that, yeah, look at all these gold. Or, I mean, these, uh, yeah, gold nebula They've got gold flecks on them, and then they turn, like, purple or green, like, slightly, just slightly, like an olive green or something. Uh, and then my Malawa shrimp, and then right there is that short-nosed algae-eating uh, shrimp that I pointed out to you guys from Aquatic Arts' website. The Malawa shrimp, however, are more clear. They don't have those calcified bands on them, even though they are both caridina. But they've got, like, little specks of metallic coloring um but they all get along and they all breed like there's no tomorrow they don't seem to interbreed but uh here's more malawa shrimp you see those so all this stuff from aquatic arts there's the malawa shrimp that have the blue to them i still have no idea what's up with that um but yeah and um my favorite plant hmm I really, uh, I really, right now, I like the Limnophilia bellum. This plant is just really, it's like a simple grass, but it has, like, beautiful red and orange and green and lime green. And then on its, like, quote-unquote boring stems, or boring leaves, 
It's got this cool, like, bronze race stripe, and then two more stripes, and then a center stripe. It's just a really beautiful plant, especially when you get CO2 and stuff going on it. I like that one. It's real easy. Back there's another one of the Aquatic Arts um, short nose shrimp. And simply, the answer for that is, so say their shrimp is 30, uh, or say, say like, 10 or 8 shrimp or 30 bucks from them or something. Well, then the shipping you might want to work out and see if it's worth it. But if they're the only place in the United States that carry the thing that you've been looking for and you are a nerd, then obviously uh, you're going to pay that, you know? And they've been working on other ideas. But again, I did free shipping last holiday season and gave that to a bunch of y'all. So, yeah. Um... But 30% off should be a killer deal. It should be more than the shipping by any means. If I mean, they're going to sell out of everything. I'd get on that quick. I will have the password for that 30% off. And I think, for, I think, don't I can't promise, but I think you guys get the jump on that. Like, that's what we were discussing was, how does that work? What's that going to look like? And, um, you know, you guys have have come through and and supported them as they have grown and switched facilities and uh they want to thank you and they're like how how can we thank your 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 pa your uh <laughs> whatever your viewers i was gonna say patrons um i should thank my patrons more where did the baddest go you guys saw it. There were two canoodling in the corner, and now they're totally gone. And I probably won't see them for another week. Urgh. Um. Come on. Come on. Come on. Also, side note. Uh, I had some people privately message me about the uh, video uh, where I talked about the Battis in particular and how they can change their uh, gender. Now, gender is the correct term. Uh, they, they change their gender, which is their perceived outward appearance in their culture. Uh, so when you're cross-dressing, that is a form of gender expression. Now, your sex is your biological, uh, or, like, your organs. What do they say you are? And some fish can change that, like clownfish. Um, and in that case, uh... I think that that would be appropriate to call clownfish, uh, say that they, they can change their sex and their gender. Now, it doesn't matter. Those are both independent of orientation, sexual orientation. So whether the fish likes other boy fish or other girl fish, sneaker males are still males. So they have changed their gender to look like a third gender or a female gender um, or a cross-dressing gender, whatever you want to call it. And that's when you have to decide, do fish have culture? And uh, I think that they do to the sense that they know that, uh, you know, a red, a blood red fish is going to be this way and is going to be a boy and going to be aggressive and we do this little dance, and we do a little tail flick and this and that for... Hey, I see the, uh, the Battis. Um, for mating rituals, right? Whereas, you know, some species don't have that complexity, but fish are real big on gender and real big on those tricks and some fish are different so like clownfish they can sense when the estrogen's too low in the water 
And so then they actually have stem cell organs in their body that that allow them to switch from a male fish to a female fish. And here's a male baddest right here teasing me. Um, and they can switch on a dime like that. Um, and it's like going through... It's like more than going through puberty, but they can switch like that. And then, uh, boy, this is hard to do with this net. Did I get him? I think I got him, y'all. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I do good? Hold on. But my point being was that I was not making fun of anybody with the LGBT uh, thing. And that, yes, as an anthropologist, I know what those terms sex and gender mean. And I use them. I did misspeak in one sentence. And, but in all the other ter times, I said exactly what I meant about them switching their gender on, on uh, us. Hold on one sec. I'm going to try to move this baddest. Uh, I'm going to set you guys up right here. I'll be right back. This was just important. And you guys are important too. But stare at the blue dreams and the, the little loaches while I try to help get this guy out of here and into the tank that he needs to be in. Hi, honey. Guys, I haven't forgotten you. I am just chasing the other baddest. I got the one, and then the other one showed up literally beside it. I'm still here though. Ah, uh, come on, you're so close. Get in the net, get in the net, get in the net. Got it. All right, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. We've got both baddest. This is the female in the net. All right, now I can answer the questions that I saw burning up. And look at this duckweed, I hate that. Stinking duckweed. Duckweed is the bane of my existence. Yeah, yeah, I know Lucas Bretz has a way to get rid of it, didn't work for me, hold on. <laughs> but I did get rid of uh, an entire five gallon bucket of it and my fish room still has this much. All right. All right. Let's look at the question real quick here. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. You guys don't need to look at me. By the way. Oh, Alan, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Super chats mean a lot. And Alan, you give a lot. So you mean a lot. No. Um, I really do appreciate that, though. A, a lot. Um, let's see here. Looking at who's coming in, what's going on. Look at all these. These are the Lucas Bretts, uh, Rainbow, uh, Tiger Endlers. However, and look at this one. He's got a hump back. It was born that way, and I've tried to catch it, and it's so quick. So now I'm just, like, letting it hang out. It's got a birth defect, and it, I feel like it's miserable, but it must be okay. Uh, Green Dragon Pleco, there's the papa of all the green dragons you see chilling around all the tanks. Um, and then this is now, I mean, there's all sorts of fish in here, but I've put, um, mulm, tons of mulm from other tanks in here. And this doesn't have much aeration or anything. It's like a little 
pond tank, but there's lots of battis in here and uh, some sun daniels so that when they lay their eggs, it gets lost in this nasty mulm. Now, if I were to kick that over, it would just, I mean, it would disintegrate so, in, into a nasty mess. Um, all right, let me, let me catch up as we watch all the shrimp. I wish y'all lived closer and I could give you some of these. Because, I mean, there's this many shrimp that they're all eating. And this is a 17-gallon tank. There's this many shrimp that they're all piling in and eating. They've all... Um, so I started with a total of six Malawa shrimp and ten or nine uh, gold nebula shrimp and three short nose algae eating shrimp. And now I have this, and not even to mention those shrimp. They're shrimp like all over the rest of the tank, not even paying attention to the crazy horde of shrimp that are eating right there. Smash that like button. Um, also, the TDS uh, on a lot of my tanks. Um, TDS, uh, I would say the TDS is usually uh, somewhere between 100 and 200 on most tanks. The exception being the tank upstairs, the 40-gallon upstairs, the bow front. It has like 400 TDS. It's very high. There's crushed coral at the bottom. The cribs really like that. Um... I need advice. I have Scutellaria japonica. I can I use no planaria and parag can I can I use no planaria and paragard? I just tried um hmm um I would use it maybe a dewormer um i don't know i'll have to look that up i'm sorry uh violet i don't know offhand um i would assume that a dewormer would kill them but if you have sensitive uh snails in the tank that you're worried about then don't do that um but if you just have even just a few shrimp then i would do the dewormer route like advantix or something like that um you know, Levamisol, something like that. Preston John, how's it going? Um, and so, uh, Curtis, when is your next live stream? Um, uh, yeah, I think clowns, clowns, uh, only change once, Curtis says. That might be true. I, I don't remember. I just know that they do it relatively quickly when, when in need. Um, how are you doing... Fish, uh, okay, sorry. I'm reading other people now. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh, shrimp fry in the tank with the new planaria. You know, with shrimp fry, I would be careful uh, of using anything unless unless that pest is killing your shrimp for sure and you're not just like, oh, there's a dead shrimp and there's some of those things on it. Um, I let it, I just let it be. I let planaria and hydra... I let them go for a little while if if I have a bunch of young shrimp for hey there's one little blue dream hanging out um I just let them go for a little while uh and then I'll I'll move them and bomb the heck out of the tank with uh anti-parasites like paragard or something like that uh and as well as uh levamisol or um uh, there, there's a bunch of different sols you can use that are agricultural slash industrial level dewormer that you can measure out. Uh, a surface skimmer does not even touch the duckweed because it's it it goes down and then it comes right back up and drives me insane. Like this, I surface skimmed. Uh, earlier today but the problem is like on a tank like this one sorry guys i know that makes you dizzy uh on a tank like this one i just skimmed this tank and took out five gallons from this tank alone you see how thick it gets it's because of the intense lighting i wanted the red root floaters so i picked them all out 
and then I totally netted everything else. Well, the problem is the plants are so high that the the net skimming just literally pushes it under. So what I'm going to need to do is overflow it um, and, you know, or, or tilt it. Like, in theory, that, that would be the way to do it. If I put down um, a rubber little thing, I might be able, like a... Um, uh, Rubbermaid lid I might be able to overflow it through one of these things and catch it now there's also I could just get a pump now the 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 other way I could show you guys which I just haven't done it I, I haven't had a pump that I could use but you take a soda bottle and you cut it in half and then you uh, cut slits around the side of the soda bottle and then you put that soda bottle upside down right at the surface of the tank with those slits all around and it should stop big things and i mean not all fish but most fish from getting sucked in but then you attach a, a pump to it and so it's sucking in the water and you're you're uh it's sucking in the duckweed with the water um so that's another thing you can do um do 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 like spike all right, fish dreams. I appreciate that. Uh, lots. Yes, I have lots of those fish, um, or lots of those uh, shrimp. Um, yeah, trumpet snails do seem to help keep planaria away. Oh yeah, you missed the announcement. So the the big announcement, um, in case you missed it, is that aquatic arts. Uh, this is nothing new. This part, they are taking. Every so everything you guys buy, eight percent of it, which is like an affiliate rate. So like when you go to Amazon.com, a lot of their clicks are they put pop up ads places, and if you click from them, they get an eight percent commission, and that's how a lot of uh, YouTubers or uh, influencers make money. And in on YouTube, like AdSense and Google kind of take over most of it, unless you have some other deal worked out. And so we have an 8% margin built in just naturally in the business. So because of that 8% margin, we've decided a long time ago to use the money and actually reinvest it back into you guys. And so twice a year, we do the big giveaway. Um, there's that baddest. Look at him. Being naughty um i've been trying to selectively breed the baddest so when i see the red um i want these super tall fins super tall and i want orange rather than red um and then there's a female baddest perfect of course live it doesn't show up of course not that would be way too convenient thanks camera but um yeah, so in any case, the big giveaway uh, will happen in in uh, in the holidays. Sorry, guys. I, I just so I'm getting. I must be getting old in my young age. Um, it's just been uh, hard to read all of all of the the stuff going by. Um, I'm a slow reader today, but uh, yes. So thirty percent off will be for Black Friday. And of that thirty, or uh, of that seventy percent, you still pay them the money that comes from there, and the money every time you use the code Secret History, living in your aquarium, uh, the secret code for AquaticArts.com, uh, which is Secret History, all in caps, fifteen if it's your first time, you have fifteen percent off, and Secret History, all in caps. 10 you can use over and over and over they still have a clearance section they it's seven up to 75 percent off they have a sales section 50 percent off um still buy those things if it's a better deal mention though that you came from my channel in an email or in the notes and then they'll enter you and i can draw you basically they'll they let me know that i had x amount of people from my channel stop by and then they'll let you be entered. They'll give you more entries for every time Every time you have a transaction. They give you a drawing. And like we gave away 
few hundred dollar gift cards, free shipping to a dozen people or 15 people. I can't remember what it ended up being. I think it was 15 in the end. Um, and so, yeah, the, the big surprise is that I finagled basically and we talked for a while and you guys are going to get 30% off for Black Friday. Although that code, we may have it go live earlier. So you get first dibs. So I'd go to Aquatic Arts and check it out. Stuff's going to sell out before then. So if you just want the 15 or 10% code, like to buy some stuff now that's in the clearance thing, that's a good idea. Like I've been missing out, even though I talk to them all the time. I talk to them every couple days. I've been missing out on deals like the half beaks that I wanted to buy because I just didn't pull the trigger on it um, and, and buy it. Um, or some of the plants, like some of the tissue cultures. They had a purple uh, Busa philandra um, uh, ghost that was, it was a brownie purple ghost is what it was. And it was like seven bucks. Um, let's see here. I can't add another fish. Bummer. Um, yeah, Kimberly, um, sparkling gouramis will eat uh, Hydra. There, I have a video on Hydra and some of the stuff that eats Hydra. A lot of things will. Ba bad, um, Badis will eat Hydra. Um, you know. So, yeah. I'm reading a UG, a UG Aquatics Odyssey 100 thing on Amazon, man. Yeah, so like I said too, if you guys were any, if you guys were curious about, um, you know, like where I'm telling you, oh, I got this at Aquatic Arts, I got this at Aquatic Arts. I've been teamed up with them for two years now as friends and, and as, you know, YouTube business, I suppose. But also, you know, obviously I don't buy everything from them, but if you need like a $50 regulator that's worked perfectly for two years, I've got three of them, uh, there's links in the description below. Uh, same with this. So this uh, is a Fluval mini kit uh, diffuser, and it's worked on all, all the way up to 46 gallon tanks. And it's six ninety nine at my local Petco, but you can get it online for nine ninety nine if and because not all Petcos carry that kind of stuff. And then there's the nine ninety nine um, tubing and a fifty cent connector piece. So if you have a cylinder that's full, it would be a total of sixty five seventy two dollars to get CO two running. Uh, so those links are should be linked below in the video as well as to the merchandise, to the shirts, and all that jazz, um, shirts with my art on it, and all that supports the channel so that I can, you know, play with this. Uh, I know it looks a little dis, dis uh, jointed, but when all that sand again, so we're gonna let the carpet grow in, we're gonna let the plants grow in and get colorful, this will turn a beautiful red and orange, we're gonna trim all that. This, um, Victoria, these rocks are uh, Oso Jade, and then this is Jade Eye and Basalt um, mix. But it's from the Cascade Mountains, and I wish you could see the true color, but it's a blue and green color, and then it has uh, quartz or jade uh, bands in it, um, and some clay too, I guess, or, or some sort of... But it, it usually gets more green as time goes on. This is like a piece that's been under for three years. Uh, and I went to up into the mountains and literally like chipped it off a mountain. Like, I mean, that's, that's how you would do it. And they use it for, um, road fill for crush. Look at these silly Corydoras ripping up my plants. Thanks, Cory. Um, all right, guys. Well, my wife is home and it looks like she is slaving away in the kitchen and I'm being a jack wagon, uh, talking about fish with my best friends hey guys um so thank you again for the super chats again if you're interested in like people always ask where'd you buy this where'd you buy that um sh there should be links in the description below should be links to the patreon and there should be links to uh my t-shirt uh artwork i also have hoodies and cell phone cases and pretty much basically if you like the artwork 
There's a bunch of art on there, and uh, if you like the Teespring artwork, they'll print it on any surface in any color. So it looks like I have like 400 different things for sale, but it's just putting the picture over and over on different things so you can scroll through it. Um, but yeah, so thanks again, Alan, uh, for the super chat. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to go hang with my wife, the love of my life, the beauty who lights up my day and allows me to have fish tanks in the way. Um, but yeah, so thanks again, guys. And uh, I will talk to you later, alligators. Honey, you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. All right, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Take care of your fish your critters, your plants. Take care of the people around you. And also, don't forget to take care of yourself or none of that other stuff's going to happen. And if we all do that, I think we'll have a pretty good world. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining.